Well, hello once again to all my biking buddies, the ones approaching the hill, the ones on top of the hill, and the ones, most of us, that are over the hill. Today I'm going to show you um, a little adventure I am just now concluding um, as an attempt to build an e-bike on a more or less standard road bike and the lessons I learned uh, doing that. Because if any of you are going to attempt to build a road bar, road bar, <laughs> A road bar no a road bike with drop bars um, this can certainly apply to you and it's very, would have been very helpful for me to know a lot of the little technical details I discovered in my own uh, attempt to do this so hopefully this will keep some people from tearing their hair out um, if they still have some so uh, here was my original intent and we all know where those lead my goal was to build what's called a gravel grinder with a motor. Um, the gravel grinders are kind of like a cross between a mountain bike and a road bike. The, the difference being, um, at least visually, is these have uh, slightly smaller tires um, than a mountain bike, but larger tires than a road bike. Um, and unlike a mountain um, bike, they, they, they always have straight bars on them. This has road bars, drop bars. Um, so you can ride longer distances without uh, fatiguing your hands because you can move your hands around on different positions on on road bars. So that was my original intent. Um, that's where I was going with this thing. Uh, unfortunately, a number of things uh, came up that I was not completely aware of, although I've been studying this for a long time. And I wanted to give uh, anyone who wants to attempt to do this at least... Uh, a few pointers on what to expect before you get into it. Uh, yeah, learn from the things I've already learned. For uh, my little adventure, um, I I used past tense um, a giant any road uh, 2018 model, and the electric kit is a Bafang BBS02, and it was a B model, which is uh, the newer one, uh, a mid drive. And that particular one, at least the one I got, has both pedal assist and throttle assist. So that's that's the makings for um, the thing I was uh, trying to build. Now I want to bring to your attention two issues uh, relating to e-bike, or actually any kind of motorized vehicle, but in particular the e-bikes, um, that when you apply the brakes, uh, it should temporarily cut the power to the motor because you don't want the motor pushing you while you're intending to stop. It makes it a little difficult to stop. So that's the first thing and that really needs to be done automatically. You shouldn't have to uh, take a second action. You know, you apply the brakes and then you say, uh oh, now i got to turn the motor off. Uh, it should uh, happen simultaneously. And then the other thing is shifting uh, gears on, on your bike also should make the motor temporarily slack off. Um, otherwise you have the motor pushing as you're trying to change gears and it just can jam up the derailleur, it can jam up the gears, it can break the chain, all kinds of problems can take place. Now there are a number of uh, bulletin boards and places where guys are talking about uh, doing these uh, kit builds, they, they tend to de-emphasize that. Well, all you got to do is stop pedaling really hard, or um, I just pedal backwards, or you know, a lot of stuff like that. But in fact, to be smooth, to make the thing work the way it really should, the motor should stop when you're applying the brakes, and it really ought to stop while you're changing gears, at least temporarily. So keep that um, stopping and uh, gear changing thing in mind as we look at the controls uh, on the handlebars of my uh, zippy dippy gravel grinder. And you'll see uh, circled in uh, yellow is the uh, control function for the pedal assist. There's an on off switch and um, an up and down on that little rocker switch. And uh, on the left is the throttle control. So you can just you know sit there, you don't have to pedal and you just push the little lever. Uh, to make it go, but a um, couple of things to note is um, they're kind of standing up there on little stalks, and they're not supposed to be up there like that. But in fact, um, they had to be because of the reasons I'll show you going forward. So, so we've got a throttle on the right, actually on the left of the picture, 
and a um, pedal assist on the left. Now one might ask, well, Mr. Whizbang Bike Builder, why are they on those little stalks? And the answer is right there on the top of that slide, because the standard Bafang control functions, the little control thingies, they won't fit on drop bars. The bars are too big, um, because I think Bafang has not uh, looked into the future and determined that they need to have um, some kind of adjustable thing, because um, these road bar bikes are going to become more and more popular, um, and their kits won't they won't work without kludging this up, and that's what happened here. And here I've uh, done some measurements of um, the little donut for the uh, pedal assist. See, there's the on-off switch up there at the top, and then a plus for you can't see the minus button, and that's about uh, 20 some 20 millimeters. Uh, this is the diameter for the um, pedal assist. Let me show you the diameter for the uh, throttle here. The hole for the throttle is, uh, it's, yeah, it's tw it says 22 mils, but uh, it's real close. I, I, I'm not sure what's inside of these things. You couldn't see very well. Um, but they, they don't open like a clamshell. You have to slip these on from the end of the bar. Um, so you're pretty pretty well stuck. If the bar's too big, these will not slip over it, obviously. Then uh, compare that uh, to the diameter of the bar itself, right next to the little standoffs uh, that are currently holding those donuts up. And you can see it's around 30, almost 32 mils, so there's a significant difference in these bars. And I uh, checked on some of my other drop bar bikes. I have um, um, an older Trek, and the same thing. Uh, the bars are much bigger than uh, those little donuts would go over. Now, I don't have a straight bar bike, so I can't really tell um, if those are in the 20 or the 30 mil range. But when I went and looked at my really old mountain bike, um, which has kind of a pulled back bar, it's definitely not drop, not a drop bar. Um, those little donuts would go over that, so there is a significant difference, I believe, in um, the bar types, uh, straights or uh, drops, and uh, that pretty much pre precludes the ability to slip those little donuts over uh, drop bars. I could be wrong, of course. I have been occasionally, but I believe that's going to be universally a problem for uh, folks that want to put these on drop bars. And then continuing on with uh, some compatibility issues with the Bafang kit, um, the brake levers, a supply brake levers, um, they also won't fit on a drop bar. Um, not only that, in order, even if they did, you'd have to pull the tape and the um, brake levers, your current brake levers, off in order to get these Bafang brake levers on there. They just won't fit. They certainly won't fit on mine. And even if they did, they still wouldn't work because they don't have a shift function in them. They're just brake levers. So even if you got this on, then you're going to have to figure out how in the world am I going to shift this thing. Uh -huh. So uh, basically, these are worthless unless you're on a straight bar bike because the shift function is usually not built into the braking lever. However, on the plus side, they do have the ability to uh, cut the motor power because there's a little micro switch inside there um, going to that uh, cable that has a connector. It's got a cap on it. That's why you can't see the pins. Uh, and that would plug into the little wire harness I'll show you here in just a second. So if when you applied the brakes, in fact, it would uh, cut the motor power, which is what you want. But because they won't fit on the bars and they don't have a shift function, you're just kind of... Uh, out of luck. And the wiring harness on this particular model, I, I don't know if they're all like this because I watch a ton of videos and they don't ever seem to have these two extra plugs that are, are circled in green. So if you were using those uh, Bafang um, brake levers, you just plug the, the little cable coming off the brake levers into one of these uh, little capped uh, connectors right there surrounded in green. Um, I've looked at other ways to get around this. You can put what they call a great big green button up on your handlebars and push that, you know, which is 
be connected also to that wiring harness and that would disconnect the motor but then you'd have to be doing two things you'd have to push the green button to kill the motor and you'd have to be yanking on the brake levers at the same time I don't think that's something that a whole bunch of us old guys want to try to do you know more than one thing at a time is a little confusing now there are some uh, things that are I guess known as workarounds uh, aftermarket shift and brake sensors um, various kinds as I mentioned before you could have a great big button on your you know, handlebar and you push that and it disconnects the motor then you could shift and you could brake but you you gotta do a couple of things at the same time um, I've watched a number of videos on how to insert these and it can get a little tricky because you have to pull the cables apart and so on and so on uh, I guess if you have no choice, it's better than nothing. It's better than having the motor drive you into the wall when you got your brakes on full of blast, you know, something like that. But uh, it's not a very elegant solution compared to the uh, factory built uh, systems. Then there's uh, another issue of, uh, I guess you could just call it aesthetics. Um, uh, when you start putting all this stuff on here, so let's say you put a big green button on there, well, you got to have room on the bar. And in this particular model, the uh, Any Road model, they give these um, models a secondary brake. So not only do you have them on the drops, but you got them right there on the flat part. And uh, these things are bar hogs. So even if you wanted to put something else on this particular model, it's very difficult. I, I couldn't figure out how to put a light on there. I couldn't figure out how to put my Garmin on there. There's just not enough room because it has these secondary uh, brake levels no doubt a really good idea if you're using this as a non-motorized bike because you can you know be up on the flats and um, pull the brakes without having to change hand positions but it certainly complicates things when you get all the electrical stuff uh, involved so uh, I, I wasn't real happy with the fact that uh, I'd have to pull those things off and then completely change out the brake cables because these the way these secondary uh, levers work um, you, you'd have to change pretty much everything um, didn't want to do that either and then last but not least there's one final possible complication which I also ran into uh, they sent me the wrong uh, charger f for the uh, battery it's a big battery too uh, and when I plug this thing in it uh, took my picture there was enough fire and flame coming out of this thing. Um, I'm sure the neighbors thought our house was uh, going up. Um, so you got to make sure you have a compatibility with all the piece parts, partic particularly the electrical parts, which can be, uh, once again, kind of tricky. So um, shocking, isn't it? So the end result of this at the end of the day and all the other hackneyed cliches, um, I gave up. Uh, I returned the whole thing back to uh, where I got it from and uh, I'm going to go to a commercially uh, built um, machine that has all this stuff built into it. Seamless shifting and braking uh, when you actually put on the brakes. All that kind of thing. Now one might ask and I'm sure a lot of people will uh, will I ever try this again? And my answer is absolutely. I'd really like to um, motorize my uh, recumbent tricycle. Um, I had wanted to do that years ago. And in fact, this uh, particular system would have fit on that one just fine because it uh, uses upright handlebars and it's got its own twist shifters and all that kind of stuff. It would work great. And eventually I may get around to doing that. But uh, I was just um, kind of at the end of my patience on trying to do all the little workarounds on a drop bar bike. So. If you got a different kind, uh, I'm sure you'd be okay with it, but um, just be aware, you try to do this on a drop bar, you're going to have a few issues you're going to have to uh, deal with. Well, there's my conversion story, and I'm sticking with it. Um, I'm supposed to get my new uh, factory-designed machine next Wednesday, I think. Um, and at that point, I'll start doing some videos of... Uh, myself and a bunch of the other guys that are getting these same machines by the way we're gonna have a whole troop of guys on the same kind of machine um, show you some of the um, really sophisticated processes that are built into the machine that um, are not in a drop bar conversion as I've just shown you so 
10-4, Roger Rubber Ducky, over and out. See you on the next vid.